and welcome back to Mancinima. I hope you are all doing very, very well. Um, as this winter weather doesn't seem to be going away and there's a threat of snow... No, not him. Um, on the horizon, the best thing we can do is to get to our local cinemas and see a good film. So uh, I've got a good one for you today, which we'll talk about in a moment. However, we can go through the usual routine. If you can hit the like button for me, please. Now that little thumbs up symbol doesn't cost you anything. All you have to do is click like. That really helps the channel out. If you could subscribe to the channel, if you are new to the channel, if you're an existing subscriber, please don't subscribe because I unsubscribe you, if that's making any sense. Um, but yeah, if you are new to the channel, if you could please subscribe to the channel, that also helps us out. That would be great. If you can hit the notification bell, that will let you know when I've done a new video. And uh, also, once you've seen the video, if you'd like to have a chat about it, come and have a chat with me down in the comments. We'll have a talk about it. Love to talk film with you guys. Okay, so on to today's film, which you may have guessed is a Rocky influenced movie by my t-shirt here. And uh, it is in fact Creed 3, third of course in the Creed movies and ninth in the overall Rocky saga since 1976. So uh, where is Adonis Creed in his life at this stage? So Adonis Creed once more is played by Michael B. Jordan who also directs this movie for the first time as his directorial debut. He's, uh, he's doing very well actually, he's got his lovely wife Bianca played by Tessa Thompson and his daughter Amara played by Marla Davis Kent. And uh, everybody's fine, they're, you know, they're living in this big plush house, all the riches that you can imagine from a retired boxer. And he's also training other boxers down at the gym, so um, yeah, everything is doing absolutely fine for um, Adonis Creed in this movie. However, it wouldn't be a great movie unless there was a fly in the ointment, and that fly in the ointment is Jonathan Majors as his former best friend Damien. Now Damien um, basically went to prison for 18 years, and um, he kind of blames Adonis for this. So of course when he comes out he reattaches himself to Adonis, friendly at first, tries to work his way into his family, and Adonis takes pity on him. He says, look, you know, you're out of job, you haven't got anywhere to live, so come along to the gym, train at the gym, and um, try to find your boxing feet again, because of course, um, as I previously mentioned, Damien wanted to be a, a boxer. Um, of course, everything doesn't really go to plan. Uh, Damien starts to wheedle his way into his life and then starts to challenge Adonis for the title of heavyweight champion of the world. And of course, there will be a boxing match at the end of this. It'd be silly if there wasn't. So, as we mentioned at the top, this is Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut. And uh, he does a fairly good job. I mean, the, the thing is, it's a vastly different movie from what you're expecting from the Rocky movies. And that's the kind of issue that I had when I sat in the cinema watching this film. I think because we've had nine Rocky movies in the past, there's a template to follow. And um, I was sitting in the cinema thinking, right, it should be hitting this beat right about now, and it should be hitting that beat right about now, and this should happen, and that should happen. Some of the beats are the same, some of the beats are vastly different. Personally, I did think it was a bit of a slow start to the film. The film does take a long time establishing flashbacks and, uh, of course, character development, which will come to play out later on in the movie. Um, yeah, I did, I did feel that it, was, it kind of dragged a little bit at the very beginning and I was just wanting it to get into that uh, kind of rocky mode, if you like. I think that's maybe part of the problem for me, is that I was looking to this to be similar to the rocky template that we've had over the past, what, eight movies? Uh, including, of course, the last two Creed movies. And um, it hit certain beats, but it was kind of doing its own thing as well. So, um, yeah, I was kind of a little bit out of sorts. I was kind of expecting, well, this should be happening now, and it didn't. It was just kind of carrying, carrying on with character development. It was dragging out a little bit. Um, and then eventually, you know, you start to get the build-up to the confrontation and the fights and the, the conflicts and all that business. But, um, yeah, I did feel at the beginning it was a little bit slow to start. However, character development is great. You do get to know a little bit more about Adonis' mother and, of course, his daughter, Amara. Her being deaf plays a part um, within the context of the film, and I thought it was a nice touch. I thought it was nice that you get to know um, uh, his daughter growing up, of course, since the last movie, and she's developing into a character all of her own right. And, of course, I think there's, they're laying the groundwork that she's going to come back in a future film, and she may even be setting on the same path that Adonis might, but um, I'm not going to say anything more than that. Um, other characters, Tessa Thompson, of course, as Bianca, is fantastic. She gets her own storyline, she gets her own weight in this film, which is great. Um, but I did think that the character that stood out the most for me, of course, is Jonathan Majors as Damien. He's, um, he's a very interesting character to watch in this film, and of course he's a great actor, and I think he's going to go on to do great things in the future. In this movie, he starts off being very humble, very kind of you know, approaching Adonis, pleading with him, you know, I, I would like a shot, and I'm very nice, and I'm very kind, and I'm very quiet. 
But there's this creepiness right from the very beginning. You just feel it right from the first time you see him. There's this creepiness that's sitting there. And you can see it brewing and it's growing. And of course, it goes on until he reaches full villain mode at some point in the film. And I thought that was great to watch. He plays that superbly. So uh, when you go to see Creed 3, just watch out for that. Just watch for the little nuances that he puts into this character. And he's, he's fantastic, but he really does build that character up from this humble to the next step up, to the next step up. And you just know he's on the path to villainy. Um, yeah, Jonathan Major is absolutely fantastic in this film. Um, the one thing I will say is that I did very much miss Sylvester Stallone in this film. He's not in this film at all, not as Rocky. Rocky gets probably one mention, Apollo Creed probably gets one mention in the whole of the film. But they are really trying very, very hard to separate on from the Rocky saga and move on to do the Creed thing, if you like. I think that's kind of a good thing in a way. In that, you know, they obviously want to develop the Creed movies for the future and how far down the line they can take the Creed movies. And uh, they're setting their own template out. But you do kind of miss some of the nuances that came with the Rocky movies. And I especially miss Sylvester Stallone being in there. For me, visiting Rocky in the previous movies was like dropping in an old, kind of like an old uncle kind of thing. You know, you pop back into his life, see how he's doing, see how he's developing, see what his story is and how he's changed over the years. It's especially lovely if you watch the Rocky movies and the, the last two Creed movies all in a row because you can see Rocky develop from this kid who was a bum on the streets, who you know gets a shot at the title, becomes world champion, loses it all again and has to build his way back up again to some kind of semblance of respect. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I really did miss Sylvester Stallone in this film, but I do understand the reasoning behind why he wasn't in it for uh, Mr Stallone's own reasons and also for the reasons of the film. Um, but yeah, there's there's a there's a little hole in this film where you, where I miss Rocky. Um, that might be the same for you, but you'll have to let me know in the comments if you feel the same way. Still, as I said, the Creed saga now has to grow and leave Rocky behind, move out of his shadow, and move into the future. So it'll be very interesting to see where they go next. I'm sure there's going to be a Creed four and a Creed five, maybe after that. Who knows? You know, as long as the saga is successful, they'll keep on making these movies. And maybe one day it will spin out into something else. Maybe the Creed movies will be left behind and there'll be another character that we'll be following in the future. Maybe Amara. Maybe it'll be called Amara 1 and Amara 2. Who knows? Um, right, so, yeah, do recommend you go and see Creed 3 at the cinema. It's a great watch. Uh, it's entertaining enough. There's one thing that kind of bugs me about it, though. Um, obviously, I, I am used to these Rocky templates. And I think it's quite difficult. I think it'll be better once we get onto Creed 4. I think once we've moved into that new kind of template... But, um, yeah, there's certain things that kind of, uh, it missed certain beats for me. And I was sitting there thinking, oh, it should be doing this now, it should be doing that now. And it didn't quite do them. But also, there's a, there's a kind of an artistic choice in the very final fight of the film. I'm not going to give too much away. But you're building up to the final fight. You've got the two characters going into the ring. Same old, same old. The, the, the guys on the announcing microphone saying, this is Adonis Creed and this is Damien. And... Um, they start the fight, and the fight's going as usual, and then all of a sudden, it goes into this dream sequence. I won't tell you what it is, but it goes into a dream sequence, and it really took me out of the film. It really kind of, I was like, wait, what? What's going on here? And it goes on for quite a little segment before they bring you back into the ring and back into the fight. Now, I can understand being different. I can understand maybe why they wanted to do something like that, make it much more personal by moving everything else away and going into this dream sequence with the two fighters. But for me, it threw me out of the fight. It took a lot of the tension out of the fight. I was kind of, come on, and then we're in this dream sequence. And I was like, well, hang on, what's going on? And they do, they do bring you back into the fight. But I just it just kind of took me out of the picture for a little while. And I don't know that I like that. And I really don't kind of hope that they carry on with that kind of thing in the future. So, um, yeah, Creed, great film, didn't like the dream sequence. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. That's our review of Creed 3. I hope you enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch it. Um, if you could do the usual for me, please. If you could hit the like button. There's a little thumbs up down there somewhere. If you could just hit that. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, it just helps my video out. helps it get out into the world a little bit more. Um, yeah, like I said, it doesn't cost you anything. If you could do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be fantastic. Again, it just spreads the word, helps people see my videos a little bit more. Um, also, if you can hit the notification bell, you'll know when I've done another one of these videos, it will come back in your kind of notifications. You'll say, hey, he's done another film review, or he's done another dinosaur video, or something like that. 
Um, and finally, come and have a chat with me down in the comments. I love to talk films, I love to talk dinosaurs, I love to talk monsters and ghosts and all that kind of thing. Anything you like, anything that's relating to my channel, collectibles or anything like that, come and have a chat with me down in the comments. Uh, it'll be lovely to hear from you and uh, I'll have a chat back with you. Thank you once again for watching this video and I'll see you all soon.